stock of the industry. You'll never be late in the Snyderling 8. This is the last. Get me Mr. Armstrong. Well, there's no use trying to stop him. Ballyhoo's in his blood. Have Mr. Armstrong come in at once. He has great ideas. To what? To excite him. His methods might have been all right in the old days of pioneering. But America's grown up since then. It's taken on dignity, decorum. Today, we have to face... Morning, Mr. Snyderling. Hello, Frank. Hi, Joe. Hello, George. Well, glad to see you all looking so chipper this morning. Oh, boy. <laughs> you see this? I've seen plenty. Don't you like it? Definitely, no. Well, whether you like it or not, it's a great sales stunt. Why, well, you've got half the population throwing their necks out of John just to read your name. It's undignified. Well, certainly it is. Well, what's dignity got to do with salesmanship? Everything. Dan, you've been our sales manager for six years now. Or is it seven? Uh, seven, Mr. Snodley. Exactly. We've enjoyed our association with you, Dan, and we've come to admire your sterling qualities. Why, even your overdeveloped imagination is charming in a way. But the time has come... For me to resign. No, no, Dan, we merely wish to suggest that under the Very circumstances... Well, that's softened the blow. He merely wished to suggest that in my own best interest, I should move on somewhere else. Your jump to conclusions, Dan. Just as you jump at everything without pausing for sober second thought. All right, then, what are you getting at? From the looks of your faces, I can see that this is somebody's funeral. All I want to know is, am I the corpse? But we're all fond of you, Dan. There's no one we Yes, I know, I know, my sterling qualities and all that sort of stuff, but what? This. Your methods of exploitation are out of date. They belong to the old era of Ballyhoo. What, you mean the blimps? Yes, the blimps. And the circus parade you staged last week in Washington, right past the Supreme Court. That sort of thing insults the intelligence of our customers. Ah, but we have customers. And customers spell sales. I don't care about that. It was overselling that brought on the Depression and nearly ruined America. And I am not going to let it ruin Snyder. What was the first country to come out of the Depression? England. Why? Dignity. We should learn that from England. And you should learn it too. England. Dignity. Oh, I see. You want me to abandon the methods that have made the name of Snyderling a household word in every American home. Okay. The desired resignation is tendered herewith, and I'm sure accepted regretfully. Here's the key to my office. Dan, why not go away for a while? Take a trip abroad, visit England, and see how they do things there. And you'll come back to us with a new point of view. We'll put it that you're going away for a well-earned holiday. Well, you put it any way you like, boys, it all adds up to the same total. Goodbye, Mr. Snyderling. Goodbye, Dan, and the very best of luck to you in whatever work you undertake. Thank you. I guess I ought to take this along as a souvenir. Yes, Mr. Armstrong. I just wanted to tell you how wonderful you've been. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, Nellie. Now, don't you get started on the sterling qualities. Here. That contains a slight token for you. Oh, I really couldn't accept it, Mr. Armstrong. Oh, but you've got to accept it, Nellie. Now, I want you to spend it all recklessly while you're still young. <laughs> now, here, don't go on. Do it. First thing you know, you'll have... Here. Where will you go, Mr. Armstrong? Where? Oh, I don't know. Might go to Texas. I can always clean up an oil. Or I might even start an orchid plantation in California. Yes, or I might even go to England. Yes, my gosh. Might even go to England. England? Why? Because, Millie, today the trend is all toward dignity. With a great big capital D. You all alone in England? Oh, no, say, I've got relations there. My grandfather was the black sheep of one of England's best families. Maybe they can teach me how to sell automatic egg beaters. <laughs> well, goodbye, Millie. Try and be a good girl. Oh, here's, here's a handkerchief, Mr. Armstrong. Oh, no, keep it, Millie. Have it framed in memory of the last of the go-getters. Go 
got such a morbid taste. <clears throat> well, it's the very same tea you've been drinking all your life. Really, there it is. And Grandmama and Grandpapa drank it too. And look at them now. Oh, I say. Now, James, that's oh. most indelicate. I can't imagine what's got into you two children. Bored, and mother, darling. We're bored with this place. Bored with not having any money. Bored with you and father. And bored with ourselves. Oh. I say. I say, look at this. Well, what is it? Look here, he's actually in England. Who is? But Daniel Armstrong. And who might he happen to be? Oh, my dear, have you forgotten that my grandmother's brother's named Daniel Armstrong? Was he the fellow that stole the mummy from the British Museum? <laughs> yes. What did he do with the mummy? It was found next day wearing a top hat occupying the front bench in the House of Lords. <laughs> And is this dreadful person coming here? No, 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 no. This is his grandson. No, the mummy stealer went to America, where I imagine his sense of humor met with more approval. <laughs> he died some years ago. That's too bad. He's the only relative I've ever wanted to meet. Well, need we do anything about the grandson? Well, I don't know, darling. I think, really think we ought to invite him for the weekend. Oh, no, the Glenarvans are coming and Mr. Manningdale. Mm. We can't have any Americans about. Yeah, but what does he do? Well, I've heard about him from time to time. Are you see my shot? Yes. He's one of the heads of the Snydling Company. Well, that's one of the biggest firms on <laughs> earth. Snydling Straight Eight, Snydling Refrigerator, Snydling Orange Squeezer, Snydling... He must be a millionaire. A millionaire? Yes. We might sell him Chell on a Hall at a fabulous price. Well, do you really think we might? Probably that's one of the reasons why he came to England. You know, the return of the prodigal and all that sort of stuff. Well, I say, if we could get a decent price for the old place where I could afford to have that tiger hunt in India. And don't it all, I need to have one shot at a tiger before I die. And I can have a decent house in town and not have to live forever in exile on this devil's island. <laughs> and I might be able to acquire a husband, Dolly. Well, that's great. So you put that over beautifully. There. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, that's all right. Don't mention it. Say, you you ought to clean up a lot of money with your talent. My word, to the first gentleman to put anything in that hat all day, sir. Is that so? Well, we'll do something about that right now. Come on, now. Stop that. Do that over again, will you? Well, how about it, partner? Why, of course, old chap. Come on, let's do something for these kids, huh? You know, they're great artists, both of them. And where would England be without art today? Huh? You know, Shakespeare would never have been able to go on if people hadn't paid for the entertainment he gave them. That's it. Come on, partner, loosen up. All contributions gratefully accepted. Hey, you. Well, Here, my good man. Thanks, lady. Thank you very much. God bless you. Don't mention it. Yeah, that's very generous of you. Not at all. I enjoy being a patron of the art. <laughs> Great. Say, that's a nice dog you got. It is a dog, isn't it? Here you are. Sir. Oh, God bless you, sir. Say, you two look kind of hungry to me. We'll soon put that right, sir. Thanks to you. Well, what do you say you come up to my hotel and have a dish of tea? Hmm? Well, we couldn't do that, It wouldn't sir. be right, sir. Who says it wouldn't be right? Come on. <laughs> That's all right, Robert. I'm taking the barrel organ up to the mission house to save a few souls. If you can't find a traffic up like this. I'll watch it. I beg your pardon, sir. Well, that's all right, Commodore. I live here, and this is part of my baggage. Come on. P2-507, Yes, please. Mr. Armstrong, your cousin's a Peter Channel, a phone for the country to say he'd be pleased to call on you here at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock? Yes, sir. I should near that now. Oh, come on. Weird. Actually. Well, I mind the customer. There we go. Ah, that baby. <laughs> How about a little more of everything, huh? Oh, I've had enough, thank you, sir. Why, you haven't had anything. The wine? No, thank you very much, sir. No? Well, you're going to finish this handsome chocolate layer cake, aren't you? Well, we couldn't eat any more, sir. We're not accustomed to having so much at one time, sir. Oh, well, OK. Here, have a cigar, Bill. Thank you very much, sir. Edna, what do you say we have a little song, huh? Oh, we'd love to. <laughs> what would you like, sir? Something hot? Oh, I'll no, say, I've listened to too many hot numbers. I like to hear something kind of old-fashioned, restrained. You know, English. English? That's right. You can think of one. Come on. Hop to it. She Hello? Who? Oh. Well, 
sent him right up. Go ahead, Edna. Well, those are not the words I know. Oh, darn. Oh, dear cousin, I'm so delighted to see well, you. Well, how are you, Cousin Pete? And you, uh, I'm afraid I don't know your first name. Enid. Oh, well, I'm glad to know you, Enid. Uh, yes. Uh, this is my daughter, Dolly. Oh. How do you do, and Cousin Daniel? James. How are you, Cousin Daniel? Oh, fine, thanks. Uh, come in, won't you? Uh, we're having some first-class music in here. Oh, uh, Bill and Edna, meet my cousins. Pete, Enid, James, and Dolly. How do you do? How do you do, sir? My lady. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Uh, sit down, sit down, folks. Go ahead with the song, Edna. It's, uh, she was poor, but she was honest. Go ahead, Edna. <laughs> Great, aren't they, huh? <laughs> Certainly nice to see you, folks. Simply splendid. My favorite song. It's mine, too. Say, they're great artists for them. I'm going to do what I can to get them recognized. If you don't mind, so we must be pushing off now. We have a baby, sir. He'll be waiting for his supper. Okay, Bill. Here, Edna. Take this to the baby with my compliments. Oh, well, thank you. Come on, Bill. Let me help. It's all right. I can handle this machine. I pushed it all over London. You shouldn't be helping us, sir. Oh, that's all right. Say, I haven't had a workout since I've come to town. There you are. Hey, you are. We make it all right? Yeah. Except that it was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Evidently wants everyone to know who he is. Well, oh. folks, it's great to see you. We're thrilled to see you, Cousin Daniel. Oh, are you really? Yes. Yes, indeed. You see, your grandfather and namesake's quite a hero in our family. A hero? I always heard he was the black sheep of the family. Oh, no. Well, he certainly had a great career in the USA. Oh, what did he do? He investigated jails. Oh. That is, as an inmate. It was his ambition to serve time in every state of the Union. But he died before he got to South Dakota. Oh, <laughs> that's very amusing, yeah. But, um, <laughs> but I hear you're a great man, Cousin Daniel. They say you're the brains of the Snyderling Company. Oh, who said that? Oh, you're famous here in England. Yes, I'm trying to play the family to get rid of our old rolls and buy one of your Snyderling straight eights. Oh, it's a lovely car. Oh, don't you believe it? It's a phony. All snappy lines, but no endurance. You stick to your rolls. Where can I help you, folks? Scotch tea, cocktail? Oh, we'd love a cocktail. We shall stay a moment. Oh, don't go. Yes, sir? No, not you, them. <laughs> well, we hope to see you again very, very soon, Cousin Daniel. Yes, as a matter of fact, we only dropped in uh, hoping that you'd be free to spend the weekend with us at Challenger Hall. Challenger Hall? Say, what do you... You know, when I was a kid, my granddad told me all about that place. Oh, he loved it. You made it! A good 30 seconds faster than the 20th century. I'm here for 206, I owe you. I owe you the ticket. I was bidding on a certainty. People didn't know their job as well as you do are always betting on certain days. Look there. There's Windsor Castle. Windsor Castle? Hey, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, boy, this is the way to see England. Thank you. This way, sir. Thank you. Mr. Daniel Armstrong. Oh, yeah. Hello, Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi. Oh, say, we better not shake. I got my hands kind of greasy on the engine. Oh. Yes, they gave me permission to ride in the cab. That's unusual. Did you enjoy it? Oh, swell trip. Say, I had a front seat. We saw Windsor Castle and we beat the time of the 20th century. Oh. Really, really, it's very interesting. Dad, uh, let me introduce Mr. Manningdale. Mr. Armstrong. The Mr. Ma... Why, of course it is. Say, I, I've seen you in the newsreel. I'm very glad to meet you. How do you do? Uh, won't you sit down? Oh, yes, certainly. Thank you. Say, this is magnificent. Why, it's even grander and bigger than I imagined. Well, we like it. You know, part of it was here even before William the Conqueror booked his passage. People are always begging us to sell it. 
Yes, I can well understand you refuse to part with a place that's been in the family for 20 generations. 20 generations? Boy, that's an awful lot of time. You know, over in New York, we begin to get restless after we've been in an apartment for as long as two weeks. <laughs> that's marvelous. Say, do you mind if I look around? I'd like to see every bit of this place. No, no, no. No, please do. But wouldn't you like to see your room first? Yes. Jenkins. Yes, sir. Show Mr. Armstrong his room. Oh, thank you very much. I'll be right back. That's marvelous. Yeah. Well, Manningdale, how does he impress you? Very favorably. I think you'll dispose of this place for the price mentioned. Really? Those 20 generations scored heavily. You'll pay for them at the rate of 5,000 pounds a generation. He's an extraordinary fellow, isn't he? Oh, to us, yes. Real American. Full of boyish enthusiasm, energy, and innocence. I congratulate you on the return to prosperity. Mm. This is your room, sir. Chilly, isn't it? That's because it's summer, sir. Hmm? Huh? Uh, where's the bathroom? Up two flights of stairs, sir. Through the armory to the west wing, bare left, and at the farthest end of the long corridor, sir. Very convenient. Uh, yes, sir. You think I can make the bathroom and a shave in one day? Why, 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 of course, sir. Any place I can wash right now? You'll find the washstand in there, sir. Oh, yes. Say, uh, tell me, uh, did anybody famous sleep in this room? Uh, no doubt Queen Elizabeth did. She managed to get about to most of them. Oh, yes, very democratic, wasn't she? Uh, will, will there be anything else, sir? No, not a thing, Jenkins, thank you. Uh, you'll ring for me when you wish to go down, sir. Say, what is this, blind man's buff? I can find my way back, all right. Thank you, Jenkins. is to hit the board. With my skill, I could win all the prizes at the Sunbury Fair. Possibly, but you're not going. Say, hey, that's quite a game. Shh. Oh, I'm sorry. Rotten shot off the board. Oh, bad luck, old girl. Oh. There's oh. an outer. <laughs> there's an inner. Oh. And there's another inner. <laughs> that's another ten shillings you owe me. Well, put it down, you rotten little book. Yes, I shall. In reply to your question, I may say, yes, it is quite a game. One requiring a clear eye, a steady hand, and nerves of steel. <laughs> the Duchess fails because she's addicted to drink. Oh. Duchess? Are you a Duchess? I am. The Duchess of Glenarvan, to be precise. Oh. You were Mr. Armstrong? That's right. How do you do? I'm fine, thanks. This miserable creature is my husband. Dark throwing champion of the home counties. Oh. Delighted to know you, Mr. Armstrong. Well, I'm delighted to know you. Both of you. You know, I had an idea that people like you were kind of, uh... Well, you seem so simple, so friendly. Oh, yeah, we've got to be friendly. We're invited here to meet you. To meet me? Why? Because you're so filthy rich. Yes, we're all planning to get something out of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's marvelous. I hope you all succeed. I suppose our hosts gave you a cordial reception. Oh, very cordial. There's no doubt they're giving you the run of the house, eh? Yes, but what the guests around this house need is a good road map. <laughs> <laughs> what you need is a spot of fresh air. Come, let's show you the rest of the place. Oh, fine. Oh, 
Look at that girl. She must be crazy. She's our daughter. Oh, uh, I beg your pardon. No needn't. She is crazy. Who's that with her? Manningdale. Have you had the pleasure of meeting him? Oh, yes, I've had the pleasure. He doesn't look exactly the great financial genius that he is. Ah, oh, oh, but that's where you English generally fool us. You manage to look dull and thick with it, but the first thing we know is you've got the Suez Canal. <laughs> <laughs> Manningdale's a pompous bore. But he wants to marry Patricia. And heaven knows we could do with a few banks in our family. Oh, well, that's a worthy consideration. It is indeed. She writes beautifully. Mm, that's what she does. One of these days she'll break your silly neck and serve a jolly well, right? Oh! Tommy, are you hurt? I shouldn't be a bit surprised. I told you so. Oh. No, not yet. Oh, Patricia, my oh, no, darling. I'm fine, Mother. I'm fine. How are you? Shall I phone for a doctor? A doctor? What for? Are you all right, darling? Of course, I'm all right. What happened to Thundercloud? How is he? He's all right, my lady. Do you ride Mr. Armstrong? Not horses. I ride hunches. Hunches? Mm -hmm. Oh. Are they some kind of American animal? Like a buffalo? No, you find them everywhere. They're uh, guesses. Feelings that something improbable is going to happen. I see. And are you on one of those things now? Yes. Do hunches ever fail? Not more than nine times out of ten. <laughs> that sounds exciting. It is. Well, we take that jump again. Nice to have met you, Mr. Armstrong. Thank you. Close. Go and have a drink. Tell me, Duke, is she going to marry that fellow Manningdale? If she knows what's good for her, she will. But does she know what's good for her? <laughs> no. Oh, that's fine. You were saying that you rode hunches, Mr. Armstrong. Always. And it certainly is exciting. It makes life one long rodeo. Have you found any good hunches in England? Yes, I found one. It's only a question of putting it over. Putting it over? What ever do you mean? Uh, putting it across. You know, selling it. Oh, it is. So you came to England to sell something, cousin dear? Why, certainly. Take my advice, Armstrong, go cautiously. Take time to observe our methods of salesmanship. They differ from yours in America. Yes, I've heard all about that. Dignity. Well, I've observed that you English don't appreciate your own ability as ballyhoo artists. Belly what? You've got something big to sell. I don't care what it is. A garter, a toothpaste. Shall in the hall. Don't keep it a secret. Set off a firecracker so that the whole world can hear the explosion. Isn't that so, James? Well, I hardly know what you mean. Well, you know what I mean, don't you, do? I do indeed, and I consider you hit the point fairly on the button. Father, Mother says it's time for you and Henry to start talking about Magnolite. Oh, there's no hurry, Patricia. You say there's no hurry, but you're not the husband of my wife. <laughs> James, you are wanted for bridge. I have caught Sir Peter already. You play bridge, cousin Dan? No, no you have a four without him. Well, no orders for me? Yes. You are ordered to go for a stroll with me in the moonlight. Well, supposing I refuse? You'll go anyhow. All right, I just wanted to know. Uh, tell me, do you uh, like this fellow Manningdale? Henry? Oh, he's all right, I suppose. Yes, but you're thinking of marrying him, aren't you? Uh, I hope you don't mind my getting personal. Not in the least. Well, then I repeat the question. The answer is yes. Yes, I am thinking of marrying him. Or just for his money? Can you suggest a better reason? Oh, do you think that's a nice way to look at marriage? It's the only way. We learned that from you Americans. Cold-bloodedness? Yes. We used to laugh at you because you glorified money, but that was when we had so much we didn't need to worry about it. Now, we have to go out and struggle for it, just as you did. And so we appreciate its value. I see. Well, so maybe if you found a man who was even richer than Manningdale, you might change your plans about marriage. I might. You think I'm pretty contemptible, don't you? Yes, in a way. But I like you. That is decent of you. I've met many gold diggers in my life, but you happen to be the first one who had the courage to admit it. You're not very shy in expressing your opinion. Are all Americans like that? No, not all of us. I just happen to be peculiar. I happen to have kind of uh, old-fashioned ideas about love. But this has nothing to do with love. I'm marrying the Manningdale Bank because it stands for strength, power. Because it understands the infinite, indescribable beauty of money. Oh, it's most romantic.
They're discussing a deal, aren't they? Yes. Well, your father doesn't seem very responsive. He'll give in sooner or later. Why? Because he has to. Has to? Well, you see, that's a long story. But the illustrations are very interesting. For instance, how do you like my gown? Very charming. I agree. But it hasn't been paid for yet. And my bracelet. Mm, it's dazzling. Yes. A dazzling paste duplicate of the original now in a pawn shop. Is it as bad as all that? Worse. But not for long. With the help of Manningdale and Magnolite, they're going to... Say, now look here. What have Manningdale and Magnolite got to do with you? Father happens to own the work supply of Magnolite. It's in Africa somewhere. Oh. It's no credit to him. He inherited it. We didn't even know it was valuable until a short time ago. Well, if your father's mines are that valuable, then why do you have the to... The mines are worth nothing without the money to develop them. Manningdale has the money. And he gets what he wants. Always? Always. Oh. Getting kind of chilly out here. <clears throat> I'm going in. While these fields remain undeveloped, you're denying the incalculable benefits of Magnolite to the country, to the whole world. Say, Duke, how about teaching me to play dart? You know, you promised you'd do it. Uh, oh, uh, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. So I did. Come along. We must settle this matter. No, 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 the matter can wait. Yeah. A good rousing game of darts will clear my brain. Yeah. Do you play, Mr. Manningdale? No. Oh, well, you ought to learn. It comes in handy. <laughs> Did you learn about the dart? Or was it just an excuse for rescuing me? It was an excuse, Duke. I thought it sounded a bit unconvincing. Now, look here. This afternoon, you mentioned something about a fun fair at, uh, where was it? Uh, Sunbury. But my wife won't let me go. Well, couldn't we kind of, uh, sneak off? You mean unobserved? Certainly. I'm crazy to see an English fun fair. Oh, well, but the old girl forbade me. She said, now, look here. I'm your guest, and you told me yourself you have to be nice to me and satisfy my every whim. That's as I'll understand. Well, if of course you put it that way, I, I've no choice, have I? None whatever. Go ahead. You, you lead the way. I know, you lead the way. Right. I haven't had one of these things since the last fair. <laughs> Why not get the Duchess and your combs at home? After him, the wind of beauty from a better cigar. Come along, my little heads. Bravo, sir. He proves his strength, the wind of beauty. Well, then, John, you're a man of muscle. A rum young belly with a been as high as Blackpool Tower. Tell me, who's next to test his strength? Come along, gentlemen. Test his strength. Come along, your grace. Here, then, hold it a minute. That's for two times. Thank you, you guys. In darts and in life. Oh, how true. Well, here's ten pounds I owe you. 
paying me cash? Always. Bless my soul. This is a new experience for me. Usually when I win, I have to put it down in a little book. I always pay cash, even if it's practically the last I've got. What do you say we cool off with a ride on the merry-go-round? Hmm? I say yes. Oh. <laughs> You've got to admit, Duke, this is a lot better than your English pastime, chasing four innocent little boxes. Yes, much. How about that Magnolia deal? What? I understand it's for sale. Of course it is. What interest is that to you, Dad? Well, what's your bottom price? Cash? Always. Let me see. Uh, take your time, Duke. We've got a long ride ahead of us. Come here. We're going round again. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We've been closing up, Jordan. No, oh, no, you're not. You keep her rolling until we tell you to stop. Here, I'll take the whole lot. Oh. There you are. Keep her rolling now. Oh, that's all right, sir. Yes. Duke. My bottom price is half a million. A pound? Of course. What else could it be? Farthing? Let me see. That's uh, two and a half million bucks, boy. That's a lot of money. Right. Okay, so. You don't mean that? Sure, I mean it. You're not joking. I'm you? never joking when I say so. I must do some more thinking. Well, take your time, Duke. I got a lot more tickets left. There. Well, what if he is? He's a businessman. He knows that the highest bidder wins. It'll be quite a treat to see his face when he hears about this. Okay, Dan. Sold. Time. Okay, Chief. You can lock up for the night. My wife can't just be lost. When she hears of our deal, everything will be lovely. Oh, will it? Why, certainly. You can let her have these trophies. She'll be crazy about Popeye. Oh, shit. Oh, all the same, I'm, I'm not looking forward to meeting her this morning. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go and present the whole problem to Lady Patricia. Patricia? But she's probably still asleep. Well, we'll wake her up. Well, we can't go waking her up at this hour in the morning. Why, well, her mother'd be furious. This is dead. I think I ought to knock louder. I, I shouldn't if I were you. Louder still. Still on the way, you'll wake up the household. Shh. Coming. What, you? And I thought it was orange juice. I, uh, we, we, we've just been to the, the fun fair. And I won this, and this, and this. And I won a ten pound note from Dan. Well, that's what he paid me. <laughs> And what did you win? Uh, your father will tell you, but uh, first, may I use the phone? Of course, Thanks. go ahead. Hello? My God, they answered. I want the London Times. The Times in London. Well, why the Times? No, I don't know the number, but you can look it up on the T's. Well, what do you want with the press? Give them the news, of course. What news? What are you talking about? Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Look here, old boy. We mustn't uh, rush into print with this all of a sudden. Why not? Well, I mean, we must, must have time to th think it over. Oh, but we have taken the time, Duke. Eighteen rides on the merry-go-round. But it isn't wise to publish it so quickly. It, it isn't even decent. Well, I assure you, Duke, you can leave that to me. Father, you've got to tell me what you've done. Well, I'm not really clear about the whole thing. The excitement of the fair rather upset me and... Uh, well? Well, it seems I sold the Magnolite concession uh, t to Dan. For how much? Oh, don't worry about that, dear. I got our top price. <laughs> A half a million. Hey, you're a big girl now. You better put something on. What the devil is the matter with this line? Half a million. And what's more, we get it in cash. Now, wait a minute. Only 10% of it. You know, the usual business custom. I'm buying an option and I'll pay you 10% of the total sale price. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Of course. That still makes it 50,000 pounds. That's right. 250,000 bucks. Hello, hello, managing editor. Uh, listen, I have some hot news for your readers. Yes? Magnanite? Where are these mines? Well, what part of Africa? Uh, what part of Africa? Rhodesia. Ro what? Rhodesia. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Rhodesia. Yes. Yes, I'll be at my hotel, the Savoy, by 8 o'clock, and I'll be very happy to receive the gentleman of the press. Why, yes, certainly. My associate, the Duke of Glenarvan, uh, will be very happy to confirm this deal. Here, Duke, they want to talk to you. Tell him that, uh... I'm instructed to inform you that... Everything is okay. Everything's what? Okay. That everything is okay. Thank you. Right. And now, if you don't need me for any further business details, I, 
I got out my room and have a good sleep. Good morning, Ben. Morning, Duke. Hadn't you better have some sleep, too? No sleep for me. I'm leaving for London at once. You realize, don't you, that you've committed highway robbery? Oh, it wasn't on a highway. It was on a merry-go-round. You stole Magnolite from under Henry Manningdale's nose. He won't like that. Well, I didn't think it necessary to consult his wishes in the matter. You love a fight, don't you? No, but I'm kind of like you. I can't resist the most difficult jumps. Goodbye, Lady Patricia. I hope you are a great fighter. You'll need to be. Thanks. Right. London? New York, Casey speaking. We just got an AP flash that an American named Armstrong has put over a big deal in England. Yeah. Well, never mind what it is. Get a statement from him. Shoot us a cable before 7. Your time. We'll run it onto the Bulldog edition. Okay? Okay. Who's the boy hotel? An interview Daniel Armstrong on the Magnolite concession. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At once. Yes, sir. Mr. Brown, you want on the telephone. I can't be bothered. It's your editor. He wants you to go to the Savoy at once to interview Dan Armstrong. Good morning, Mr. Armstrong. Delighted to have you back with us. You will occupy the same suite? Well, it's okay for today, but from tomorrow on, I want the biggest suite you've got. Mr. Armstrong? Yes? We're from the press, sir. Oh, well. <laughs> yes? We'd like an interview on your purchase of Magdalene. You want to know your plans for the development of Magdalene? Well, okay, boys. You give me a chance to clean up, and I'll give you a swell story. I'll only be a few minutes. <laughs> Take the dinner coat and press it. Very good, sir. The reporters out there? They're in the drawing room, sir. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, just a minute. Yes, sir. Come here. Listen, uh, do you happen to know what uh, Magnolite is? Mm, magna? Yes, Magnolite. Well, I know, sir, but I'll try and find out, sir. Well, never mind. I'll tell you later. Thank you, sir. Okay, boys. Fire away. What do you want to know? Uh, Mr. Armstrong, will you start development on the mines at once? Why, certainly. We can't allow rich property like that to remain idle. The bulk of the product will go to America, of course. Not necessarily. This is an international project. All will share in the benefits of Magnolite. And just what are the benefits of Magnolite? Well, uh, what do you think? It'll be used principally in the manufacture of airplanes, won't it? Yeah. Well, uh, what leads you to that conclusion? It says so in an article we're publishing in the Times tomorrow. Oh, does it? I've got to prove it. Perhaps you'd like to correct it. Oh, yes, yes, sir. I'll, I'll look it over. Yes, it is, Mr. Armstrong. Oh, thank you. Well... You see, it says there that Magnolite is lighter than aluminium and stronger than steel. Is that true? Well, uh, the Times is a reliable paper, isn't it? Ah, oh, yes, sir. Well, mm-hmm. Well... Well, this article seems to have all the main facts. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, I can tell you this, gentlemen. The development of Magnolite is going to be an event of historic importance. It is the turning point in the aviation industry. The greatest step forward in the conquest of the air since the Wright brothers made their first epical ascension from the sands of Kitty Hawk. Oh, uh, just a moment, please. Hello? Yes? Who? Mr. Manningdale? On his way up? Thank you. Is that Mr. H.P. Manningdale? Of the Manningdale Bank? Yes, he's a friend of mine who likes his news before it reaches the public. Is he interested in Magnolite? Oh, very much. You're going into partnership with him? Well, I can't tell you anything about that now. Ah, Mr. Manningdale. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Armstrong. Won't you come in? Oh, I, uh... I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, no, 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 not at all. Uh, gentleman of the press, Mr. Manningdale. Good morning. Good morning. Sit down. Uh, uh, just make yourself at home, any place at all. I'll be through in a moment. To conclude, gentlemen, it is more than that. It is the beginning of a new era of civilization, an era of peace and prosperity. It is as significant as the discovery of fire which first illumined the dark ages of primitive man. Think of it. Magnolite on land, magnolite on sea, magnolite in the air, magnolite in all the homes of humanity. Well, uh, I'll have something more for you in a day or two. That'll be all, gentlemen. Thank you very well, much, Mr. Armstrong. We'll be calling on you. Oh, well, thank you. Well, thank you. I'm very you. sorry to have dragged you out of bed so early, boys. Just in time for that. Very nice thank meeting you, you all. Good Goodbye. Goodbye. Nice speech. 
Nice and still of you to receive me. Oh, I'm sorry to have kept you. Do sit down. Cigarette? No, thanks. I am strictly a cigar smoker. I keep a factory in Havana, busy all by myself. Oh. I've discovered something very interesting about you this morning. Well, news travels fast. I've discovered that you're the world's best jockey on a wooden horse. Well, maybe someday you'll let me take you for a ride. No, I'd prefer to choose my own mounts and my own races. You didn't come here to discuss horses with me, wooden or otherwise. No, as a matter of fact, it's about the Magnolite option. But it has tremendous possibilities, if properly developed. Well, that's what I intend to do. I have a campaign outline now. When you get this Magnolite out of the ground, what do you propose to do with it? Build. Airplanes, wristwatches, fountain pens, baby carriages. Magnificent vision. It'll take tremendous capital. I can raise it. I'm afraid you don't know the English investor. He's very slow to accept new ideas. I'm sure that he knows a good thing when he sees it. And I'm going to make him see Magnolite. I admire your courage, but... Yes, but uh, what? What you propose can't possibly be done. Now, I know what you paid for the Magnolite option, and I'm prepared to offer you a handsome profit. Say, 10,000 pounds. Well, that's very generous of you, Mr. Manningdale, but I won't sell. You've had your chance. The trouble with you is you were a bit too deliberate in taking advantage. It's mine now. 12,500. Mm -mm. 15,000. No, save yourself the trouble, Mr. Manningdale, but I won't sell. You think I'm playing this game solely for money, but you're wrong. May I ask what stakes you are playing for? Excitement. Thrills. The thrill of doing something that can't possibly be done. Oh, I see. Magnolite on land, Magnolite on sea. Magnolite in the air, Magnolite in all the homes of humanity. <laughs> homes of humanity. Great Scott, Dan, you've done it superbly. The whole world will be shrieking for Magnolite. By the way, what is the miserable stuff? Well, it's a hitherto unknown metal which combines the lightness of aluminum with the strength of steel. It's possible use as a manifold, especially in the aviation industry, where... There's one in the know. You can read all that in the Times. The contracts are quite ready, sir. We've been started all the clauses you suggested regarding payment. Come along, let's sign the papers. And now, my dear Daniel, we shall be glad to acknowledge the receipt of 50,000 pounds. Cash. Well, I, uh, I think for that part of the ceremony, we should step into another room. But why? Well, if you don't mind, I uh, hate to pass money in the presence of strangers. <laughs> Seems a curious whim, but, but come along. I'll wait here. Oh, no, I, I, I want you to come, too. I, uh... I suggested this change of venue because I have several things to talk to you about of a strictly private nature. In the first place, I haven't got 50,000 pounds. What? I haven't got 50 pounds. I haven't got enough money in the whole world to pay for my hotel bill for another week. Good gracious. Well, we're at least in possession of the facts of the case. But not the 50,000. I can only say, Dan, that we're extremely grateful for the information that you've given us. But there's more to be said. The publicity we're getting is worth money, millions. But we want something we can put into a bank, not into a scrapbook. But I have a scheme that'll put it in the bank and benefit the public as well. Sorry, old man, but the whole thing sounds rather vague. And remote, too. Somehow it all seems to me in the far-off future. Oh, but you don't understand. I'm talking about the present. Now, you give me 30 days and I'll put all of us on Easy Street. What exactly are your plans? We'll form a company. You mean you and us? Yes, you and me. We'll call the company Magnolite Limited. The Duke of Glenarvan, president. We'll start a selling campaign that'll make this country Magnolite crazy. Well, what should we sell? Stock. A million pounds worth of stock. And in a month's time, you'll be paid in full. The development of the mines will be started and we'll all get rich, even including the stockholders. Now, what do you think? Don't ask me. I'm a darts player, not a financier. Frankly, I'm suspicious of the whole project. Well, the alternative is Manningdale. And when he gets hold of something, he shares with no one. What do you say, Lady Patricia? I'm probably a fool, but I'm with you. Let him have his 30 days. I'll join the company. I knew you would. Even if we fail, we'll have a lot of fun. How, dear? Patricia! Why, it'll be immense. We'll put on the biggest orgy of Ballyhoo in history. 
We'll advertise Magnet Light as if it were a circus. Why, we'll have everybody fighting for shares of the Miracle Metal. We'll get a fortune out of it. And a million laughs. A million laughs? Why, I'm beginning to chuckle already. We'll have everybody in town at our feet begging to be let in. And as for you, I can see your name right now in great big letters. The Duke of Glenarvan, President, Magnet Light Limited. A fool for mankind. What other nonsense there advertising Magnolite as if it was some kind of breakfast food? Typical American loudness with nothing to back it up. I'm not so sure there's nothing to back it up. Look, that's the work of our pal. Good old Dan. Good old Magnolite. Magnolite. Like Miracle Metal. I've been for years I've owned those mines of my father before me. I've only just begun to realize there may be worth something. I could have told you that long ago. Why didn't you? Because I didn't happen to think of it. Well, say, Captain, what is all this about magnum light? Blessed if I know. I can tell you it's a matter with the lightness of aluminium combined with the strength of steel, which will revolutionize the aviation industry and open yeah, up the Yeah, that Come on. Beautiful sight, isn't it? Come on, we've got to get to work. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. We've got to see how the science works. Business is good, eh, mate? Yes, we're doing nicely. Thank you. Cool. We've laid the groundwork of the publicity. Now we've got to sell them. But first, we've got to have an emblem. You know, what the lion is to England, what the shamrock is to Ireland, what the number 57 is to Heinz. I've got it. A torch. A torch made in the shape of an airplane. It'll be symbolic of Magnolite, illuminating the new era of civilization. We'll get electric torches made and have our salesmen carry them. But where are our salesmen? I was coming to that. We'll have to build up our sales force overnight. But uh, we want high-class people like, uh, well, like you. You know, ladies and gentlemen, young and attractive preferred. We'll go to the opera, to the Ascot races, to the exclusive clubs, and push Magnolite. Do you happen to know any uh, ladies and gentlemen like that who'd like to make, say, five pounds a week plus commission? My address book is full of them. Well, call them up and tell them to be here by 10 tomorrow morning. I'll do it at once. Get me me fair, double two, double nine. So, uh, by the way, have you seen Manning Day lately? I saw him this morning. Well, is he going to put up a fight? No. He's going to France for a rest. Oh, fine. I hope it's a long rest. Get out. Hello? Every one of you is expected to carry a fountain pen. Well filled. And I want you to approach your new work with the conviction that salesmanship is the most important function of the human race. After all, the most successful schoolboy is the one who can sell himself to his teacher. The politician to his voters. The happiest girl is the one who can sell herself to the man she loves. Mmm, rather near the knuckle, wasn't it? And now, Lady Patricia will pass among you copies of the theme song. Magna Light, we need you. Oh, there, Edna, come in here and teach you the theme song. There we are. I expect you all to be letter perfect when I get back. <laughs> oh, all right, go ahead, Edna. Oh, will you dance look splendid? Yes, sir. Why, if it isn't the Duke and the Duchess. Oh. Welcome to Magna Lighthouse. What can I do for you? Well, we just wanted to know if, if we were to join this ridiculous organization. We, well, I mean to say that... Let's... What he really wants to say is, may we have offices with our names on the doors? Why, of course you can. Oh. And the gold letters, too. Oh. Why, it'll be swell. Of course, you'll be chairman, you. Oh, well, quite so. And I'll be treasurer. Why, that'll be perfect. Good morning, Captain Dan. Well, James and Dolly say this is getting to be a regular family reunion. Well, we were wondering, Cousin Dan, if there was any chance of our getting a job with you. Why, of course you can. Room for all of us. Now, you work hard and you'll be so rich, you won't have to sell Chan in the hall. Come on in and learn the theme song. Oh,
am illuminating the new era of civilization with magna light. This is Harry Hopper, the world's richest bookmaker, Mr. Armstrong. Oh, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Hopper. Thank you, sir. Harry's as straight as a coiled rattlesnake. My God, he's positively. His grace is too flattering. I bet you he's got hundreds and thousands of ill-gotten gains at his bank. Oh, you don't say so. What the devil is this? Oh, well, I'll tell you. See, I'm illuminating the new era of civilization with Magnolite. Magnolite? What's Magnolite? Yes, Magnolite. Don't tell me you haven't heard about it. Thank you, Mr. Hopper. You'll never regret it. This is the greatest investment you've ever made. Froggy wins. Are you all that horse? Not in. How much is the race worth? Something like ten thousand pounds. Ten thousand. Well, come on. Well, we must find Lord Enton. Yes, we're giving a party for a lot of robber barons. Well, you know, big manufacturers are future customers. Why, certainly the press will be welcomed. We love the press. Yes, and that goes for the newsreels, too. Okay, goodbye. Anybody calls, I'll be at the barber's. Yes, sir. There's a gentleman to see you, sir. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but I'm leaving. He says he's an old friend of yours, sir. His name is Snigerling. You say Snyderling? That's right, sir. He's from the States. Snyderling? Well... Hello, Dan. It's mighty fine to see you again. Well, how are you, Mr. Snyderling? Oh, say, what brings you to England? I've been attracted here by a very powerful magnet called Magnolite. Oh, I see. You could use it in your Snyderling straight eight, couldn't you? Ah, Dan, you always jump to the right conclusion. I realize you're a very busy man. I don't want to bother Oh, you. don't bother at all. I'm just off to the barbers. Come along. You can have an egg shampoo. <laughs> By Jove, Dan, it's wonderful to see the success you've made. Why, Magnolite is the biggest thing in the world today. Why, the whole American nation wants to get in on it. It's a real tribute to your genius as a salesman. Well, I owe it all to you, Mr. Snyderling. Me? Oh, nonsense, sir. <laughs> nonsense, sir. Oh, no. I'd never been able to swing this if you hadn't told me how the British love dignity. <laughs> Mr. Armstrong. Yeah? Duke of Glenarvan on the phone. Oh, okay. Uh, hello, Duke. Well, the party is at 8 o'clock tonight. Yes. Manningdale? When did he get back to town? Why, yes, of course. We'd love to have him at the party. Oh, I think it's mighty sporting of him to want to come. Well, now, look here. I'm uh, going to take the plane for Paris tomorrow morning, then I'm going to snap right down to Dijon and see old Plumet and talk business. Mm-hmm. Give my best to the Duchess. Goodbye, Duke. And, uh, when can we have a little business talk, Dan? Oh, there's no hurry, Mr. Snyderling. When we start manufacturing Magnolite, we'll be very happy to sell it to you or anyone else on Earth. But, Dan, I've come all the way to England to uh, make you an offer. Well, your trip to England needn't be wasted. It's very educational here. Study their methods. You know, when they build something here, they give it strength, endurance. Remember that in building your Snyderling cars. Notion, sir? Oh, yes, by all means. Oh, uh, listen. Give Mr. Snyderling some of your special salve. It's very good when the skin gets irritated. You know, this whole Magdalene affair is frankly incredible. It's like some amazing adventure from the Arabian Nights. Armstrong has done more in 30 days than we could have done with luck in 30 years. Your cousin's a remarkable fellow. Oh, he's my husband's cousin, not mine. Oh, yes, of course. All the same, he's still remarkable. Henry Manningdale seems to be in an offensively jovial mood. Yes, too jovial. It worries me. It worries you? Why? Well, he wouldn't be so happy if he didn't have something up his sleeve. I wonder what it is. It's a big night for us, Mr. Armstrong, isn't it? Oh, it certainly is. <laughs> Another investor. Oh, uh, Duke, I think you might just as well begin. Uh, go ahead. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Please silence for your chairman, His Grace, the Duke of Granada. Well, that speech exactly as I wrote it. We want nothing spontaneous from you. Uh, yes, sir. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, 
as chairman of Magnolite Limited, I welcome you most cordially on, on this happy occasion. Uh, in other words, greetings. <laughs> what have I said? Uh, now, now that Magnolite is about to be placed on the market, we are prepared to do business with you, to whom a miracle metal will come as an inestimable, inestimable boon. A boon. Yes, oh yes, it's an estimable boon. Uh, in other words, a, a jolly good thing. <laughs> uh, there seems to me a great deal more for me, me to say, but it all seems rather on, on, on the dull side. What? One side, eh? So, permit me to introduce you to the, to the real hero of this great occasion, my friend and colleague from America, Mr. Mr. Daniel Armstrong. <laughs> Duke, Duchess, friends. Well, for the first time in my life, words seem to be failing me. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to give you a line of high-powered selling talk, but I can't do it. I, I just wish I could tell you how I feel about this, this funny country of yours. I've learned a lot here. When I first started on this job, I didn't know anything about Magnolite. I'm still pretty foggy about it. <laughs> but my contacts with all of you have taught me that the human race is a... well, is a pretty decent club to belong to. And, uh... And, uh... Well, I guess that's about all. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wonderful, Mr. Armstrong. We're over the top. We shall be collecting dividends soon. It won't be long. What do you say we walk out of here for a while? Let us. The atmosphere of success is becoming stifling. You'll soon get used to it. I wonder. You know, I love to look at that old river. I like to think it was flowing along here calmly, quietly, when the Romans came to Britain. And when the Romans left. You know, Pat, after you've been in this country for a while, you begin to get a queer idea, a queer feeling about time. You begin to see it all as one piece. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. What are you thinking about, Pat? Maybe your river was sweeping me along, too down to the sea for tomorrow. But we haven't come to the bridge yet, have we? Well, the way you're looking wonderful tonight. Thank you. Oh, uh, that's a lovely tune they're playing. What is it? It's a Viennese waltz. Vienna. That's where you live for so long, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh... <clears throat> By the way, I uh, haven't gone through the motions of thanking you for all that you've done for me. You've been a great trooper, Pat. There's no need for any gratitude. It was a business proposition. Was that all that it was? That's how you offered it, in cold blood. You were an expert salesman and I a first-class gold digger. We combined our talents and we've done very well. Oh. Well, I guess you're right. I'm just a salesman. I better not try and kid myself into thinking that I could ever be anything more than just that. Oh, you're here. I've been searching every nook and cranny. I've been listening to Mr. Armstrong deliver a lecture on the history of London. Oh, rather? Wish I'd heard it. Uh, may I tear you away for a dance? Let's. You don't object? Oh, no, not at all. I seem to remember that I interrupted you once. <laughs> Your friend seems flushed with triumph this evening. He has reason to be. You're rather fond of him, aren't you? Yes. The most delightful romance. No, Henry, you are wrong. There's no romance in Daniel Armstrong, except the romance of big business.
come on and tell us some funny stories. Well, if you'll excuse me, Duchess, I'm going to bed. Bed? I've never heard of such a thing. But the party's just beginning, Dan. Bed at this hour? Why, it's tomorrow. Yes, I know, Duke, but I'm tired. Besides, we have to make that trip to France tomorrow to see Plumet. Good night, Duchess. Oh, Dan, it's unheard of. Oh, good night, over. Good night, Duke. But it'll spoil the whole afternoon if you don't come, Dan. You must come. Yes, I'll go there. They're running the Grand Prix this afternoon. I got a white hot tip for a horse called called Mellor. I'm sorry, but I've got to go to Dijon to see Plume. Oh, Plume can wait. We'll all go and call on him tomorrow. No, I've got a hunch that I'd better go see him today. Oh, well, old boy, if you, if you must, you must. Can't you? We, we ought to be off. So sorry, Dan. So am I. When will you be back? Not till late, I guess. It's, it's a long trip. Oh, uh, yeah. A couple of thousand francs. Put it on that horse. Malheureux? But he hasn't the ghost of a chance. Well, you bet on him anyway. Very well. But malheureux means unlucky. Well, that's fine. My favorite horses are those that can't possibly win. Dr. Kumi, I believe. Oh, a moment, a moment. You have probably never seen a bar of Magnolite. Here is a sample. Well, that's the stuff, is it? Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Beautiful. C'est magnifique. And when I have finished with it, it will have the strength of a girder of steel. Mm. Monsieur, will you be seated? Yes, thank you. My name is uh, Armstrong. Oh, I know that already. Yes? Oh, I have read all about it. Why, even here in Dijon, the people on all sides are always begging me to tell them how can they buy shares in Magnolia. Well, so my Ballyhoo campaign has reached even this place, has it? Oh, it is even more popular than the National Lottery. <laughs> oh, that's great. Now, about your process. My process is essential. Magnolite? Why, people have known about Magnolite for years, but they've never been able to do anything with it. Until I, Plumey, discovered how to develop it. Even as Bezemir discovered how to develop steel. Yes, yes, I know all about that, and that's the reason I'm here. Of course, I appreciate that you're a brilliant scientist, and you deserve the enormous reward that you're going to get. But of course, you understand that your patents aren't worth anything without Magnolite. And it so happens that I own that. So we have to get together, haven't we? But my friend, we cannot get together. Oh, but we must. I need you, you need me. Why, we have thousands of investors who will be ruined if we don't start producing. I'll pay you a handsome royalty on every pound of Magnolite produced, no matter what form it may be in. But I no longer have control of the process. Well, who has? Well, only a month ago, I sold it to an Englishman. Uh, his name... You don't have to tell me. I know it already. Manningdale. Mais oui. But how did you know? He swore to keep it secret. Yes, he kept it a secret, all right. <laughs> Manningdale. Well, why do you know? I was just thinking of something. Oh, I see. Well, Manningdale must thank you a great deal for all that you have done for him. Yes. You've made my patents worth a great deal more than he paid me. If only I had known, I would not have sold out so quickly. Oh, well, there's no use crying over spilled milk. Goodbye. Dr. Jumet, nice to meet you. Au revoir, my friend. I shall be very interested to know what happens to Magnolite. So will I.
Oh, I... I expect I fell asleep. Yes, I expect you did. But how did you happen to select my bed? I was waiting for you. What about Plume? Did you see him? Well, I can give you the answer in one word. Manningdale. During his pleasure trip to the continent a month ago, he went to see Plume and laid cash on the table. I warned you he'd put up a big fight. He did. He's a smart man. But the fact remains that you own Magnolite. <laughs> no, I don't. It belongs to a lot of people named Smith and Jones and the Glenarvans. You remember that first night at Charana Hall when we were walking in the garden and you told me what it was that Manningdale wanted? Yes, I remember. Well, I went charging in and kidnapped your father. Took him to the fun fair and bluffed him into giving me the Magnolite option. That wasn't a bluff. You made good on every one of your promises. Not on all the promises I made to myself. I was reaching for the moon, Pat. And all I've got is a handful of clouds. What do you mean? Well, that night, in the garden, I did something I've never done before. I fell in love. That was silly of me, wasn't it? But you see, you were the first woman that I'd ever met who plays the game the way I do. Cards on the table, nothing up your sleeve. Now, you told me plainly that you were in the market. You'd marry Manningdale because he happened to be the highest bidder. Well, all right, I said to myself, maybe I can outbid even Manningdale. For a while, I, I thought I was going to do it. But uh, he kept his cards out of sight. Now he stumped me. What are you going to do about it, Dan? Do? I don't know. But I have an idea this is the one situation I won't be able to talk my way out of. We'll have to go back to London first thing in the morning, so you better go get some sleep. Yes, I, I suppose you are right. Oh, uh, Dan, uh, I forgot to tell you. Malheureux won. And, and I put about 50,000 francs on the table. 50,000 francs? <laughs> well, I guess that's the consolation prize. Shareholders face heavy loss. Yes, that's what the papers say. I think it's serious. see Manningdale. All right, go ahead, but don't yield an inch. Fight to the last ditch. With what? With a million pounds. We'll start developing the mines. We'll produce Magnolite. Yes, and when we've produced it, what are we going to do with it? Eat it? We'll force Manningdale to give in. If it's a test of endurance, we'll show him the stuff we're made of. Yes, but Manningdale can hold out longer than we can. Well, if we've got to go down, by gad, we'll go down gallantly. Like the little revenge. All sails set and colors flying. Those people down there, and south more, they'll sink with us to the bottom. The bottom of the sea is in a nice place. Come in, Mr. Armstrong. Do sit down. Thank you. Have a cigar. They're rather good ones. No, thanks. No, let's waste time on preliminaries. I don't like you, and you have no overwhelming love for me. You put it bluntly. Well, then we understand each other. Perfectly. Oh, good. 
How much will you take for your plume process? This time it's my turn to say, not for sale. But you have terms of some kind. What are they? They're simple. You transfer to me your entire interest in Magnolite. You mean you'll be satisfied with a knockout of me personally? Well, this is business, not pugilism. <laughs> well, what of the Duke of Glenarvan's interest and all the other investors? Naturally, I should respect those just as thoroughly as you would. You sure of that? Yes, I'm sure of that. Well, supposing I don't accept your terms? Then I sit tight and wait for your next move. And my next move is out. I accept your proposition, Manningdale. You can draw up the papers giving you the full control that I now hold. And I hope you make a lot of money for everybody concerned. I'm leaving England right away, so I'll appreciate if you draw up the papers as quickly as possible. Yes, I will. May I congratulate you on your victory. We Americans are mighty good in the short sprints. But you English seem to be better over the distance. Thank you. I may as well tell you that I knew this is exactly what you'd do. How did you know it? I adopted your method. I played a hunch. I guessed that in an emergency you'd do the honorable thing. You've done it. Well, in that case, I will have one of your scars. They look rather good, by all means. Here's a copy of the agreement with Manningdale. Signed and sealed. Everything else is cleaned up. Your mills will be rolling within six months. The whole thing depresses me unutterably. Why? You're going to be one of the richest men in the world. Yes, but without you, the whole business won't be any fun. Oh, well, you can hire a brass band and have it play for you every now and then. That'll remind you of me. <laughs> what about you, Dan? Where will you go? I'm going on a quick tour of Europe with the 50,000 francs I won on Montereur. I take the plane for Vienna this afternoon. So I guess uh, we better say goodbye right here and now. And we won't see you again? Oh, yes. I'll come back to England sometime when I've got another big idea. Well, goodbye, Duchess. For once, the Duke was right. It won't be fun without you, Dan. Oh, yes, it will. Goodbye, Duke. Goodbye, Dan. We've had a swell time, haven't we? <laughs> swell. Goodbye, Pat. Goodbye, Dan. Oh, I nearly forgot that. It's traveled a long way. Well, the uh, three o'clock plane for Vienna be on time. It shouldn't be more than a few minutes late, sir. Oh, then I'm too early. Usually I'm late for a waltz. Oh, well. I probably couldn't dance it anyway. any time, Duke. You went and got yourself a brass band. Yes, old boy, but I must have been for your arrival and, and not your departure. Dear right. Dan, we can't bear to see you go. <laughs> no. <laughs> just, just a minute, ladies and gentlemen, just a minute. Here, Willie. Oh, thank you. On behalf of the happy investors of Magnolite, or as many of them as we could get together at such short notice, I beg to wish you good luck and Godspeed, old boy. And we wish to say that your resignation from Magnite Limited is not accepted. Am I right, everybody? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Now, uh, if you friends really... No, no. I can... Wait, wait. I'm not nearly finished yet. We fully recognize your right to enjoy a well-earned vacation. But we flatly refuse to admit that your association with us is ended. Yeah. Therefore, I feel... The is leaving. Just a minute, I'm making a speech. Yes, I, 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 I know what it is, Duke, and all I can say is bless you. Bless all of you. Goodbye, Come on, sir. Goodbye. You're going? Of course I am. But you mean I've reached the moon? Did you doubt it? And this time you can't talk yourself out of it. All aboard! All aboard! Come on. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, England. It's a wonderful place. I love it. It's a country with a future.